starting off with a, a really either end of the spectrum as it kind of kind of work well as it is um we've got um salesforce on the one hand we've got adam kaplan who leads the emerging technologies and blockchain for salesforce a, a, a big platform and we've I mean, we've, we've partnered him up with uh, from san francisco definity a startup that um wants to tear up the rule book and start over so we've got dominic williams the ceo of definity with us today and uh, uh i just want to introduce those two guests to us. Let, let's let's get you on guys hi um, I mean, okay, I'll, I'll start. hi guys, hi guys. I, hi. Let, yeah, let me start. Let me start with the first question um, for Adam, right? And just briefly, just briefly, maybe in a couple of sentences. Um, you know, what? I mean, this is a classic sort of enterprise blockchain question. What is the problem you're really trying to solve, and why do you need a blockchain, any kind of blockchain, to do that? Hey, and hey, Sander, great to touch base. Awesome to be here. Uh, yeah, you know, it's so interesting how you open where we try not to even use the word blockchain anymore. So it's exactly what you guys are saying. I think the hype is dying down. We were seeing just tons of IT organizations sort of in a in a tinkering space or it was disconnected from the business. It was about testing technologies, trying to find really a problem to solve. And, and really our approach has been, hey, let's not start there. Let's start what problem are we trying to solve? Where's the business value? Forget the consensus and the technology piece and because you can do crazy deep dives around that stuff, but where can we really bring value? And for us, it's really around networks. That's where our clients are saying, hey, we want to go to market as an ecosystem. We want to share data. We want to provide a unified experience. And that is really powerful. And that's where we're seeing companies come together and want to leverage our technologies. And we try to get away from any of the technical discussions and just keep it to, to business value on problems we're trying to solve. And it's been it's been just fantastic the feedback from customers and and we say, hey, we'll make it easy for you and and just go ahead and, and form your network and focus on the on the business challenges. And it's it's really been we're seeing tons of demand. So yeah, well, I you know I often think that um, you know the bringing together of lots of companies to share their data is a sort of magical. Thing in a, in a way, well, I, I was just like if I just turn to Dom for for, for a minute, uh, you know, Definity, uh, a, a really uh, one of the really big interesting projects uh, in, in blockchain, and you know, I know you guys have been talking about completely changing the platform, the big tech platform model, and you did you did a sort of <clears throat> open version of LinkedIn, which which is called Linked Up, and I, I think there's also been mention of a thing called Sales Machine, even. Uh, without putting the cat amongst the pigeons you know too much but dom listen tell me you know what what, what it is you're trying to do and how you're going to do it well um definitive is a, a not-for-profit foundation uh we've got uh several research centers around the world and we're developing a protocol called icp um that will create the internet computer so today the internet is created by a protocol called ip it only does connectivity um icp will uh, extend the internet and enable it to host software and data. So you can just write your um, software to the internet if you like. And uh, this software will run uh, with the same security guarantees as smart contracts. Um, it'll have fantastic performance. Uh, the, the internet computer itself can scale out. Um, it involves a lot of very interesting uh, new engineering and, and computer science, which simplifies um, software development in various respects. And uh, it also enables the creation of a new kind of open internet service, um, which can be a hyperscale internet service. And uh, we believe in what we call the open internet. So we think the internet is gonna develop on two tracks. On, on one fork, you're gonna have the sort of closed proprietary internet, which is run by sort of uh, big tech, uh, very monopolistic. Um, and that's what we see today. And on the other branch, we're going to see the open internet. So the internet computer makes it possible to create um, an internet service that really runs as part of the fabric of the internet using something called autonomous software. And this brings a, a number of ma major advantages. You can think about uh, it as the application of the open source software model to running services. So um, one, one of the advantages is it can be more transparent. Um, another advantage is that uh, it, it can share user data and functionality in non-revocable ways. So for example, um, if you remember 
when uh, Microsoft bought LinkedIn back in uh, 2014, 2015. And back, back then, there was a thing called the programmable web, and thousands of startups are actually trying to build on top of uh, the professional profiles um, LinkedIn shared. But when Microsoft bought LinkedIn, uh, you know, they revoked everyone's access to those professional profiles. And these thousands of startups were kind of uh, found themselves in deep water and a very difficult situation. <laughs> in fact, I, I was aware of one that um, had to sell itself in a fire sale. It was a unicorn, had to sell itself in a fire sale to Salesforce because uh, Salesforce maintained its API access. But there are lots of reasons for um, the open internet. Um, but, you know, the Affinity Foundation um, is sort of re-implementing uh, you know, mainstream uh, internet services as sample applications to demonstrate how the internet computer can be used and is releasing them. Um, one of them that's been discussed is sales machine. The last one was linked linked up. But but in fairness, there's lots and lots of internet services that are going to be re-implemented as sample apps. Um, um, oh, so sorry to interrupt you. Um, that's really, that's pretty cool. Um, you know, when you think about the way enterprises work, and you just mentioned, obviously, kind of monopolistic tendencies, how, would would an enterprise build on um, your services, or are you really trying to attract the startups? Well, I think there's two different markets. I mean, I, I think it's certainly true that uh, we, we want the internet computer to be a complete replacement for the traditional legacy IT stack. So, you know, it enables you to build enterprise systems without databases and web servers and middleware and all that stuff. Um, and a lot of enterprises will, um, you know, be very attracted by the idea of building on the internet so they're not a captive customer. They'll be very attracted to build on a platform that's secure by default so they don't depend on firewalls and VPNs and security teams for their security. And they'll be very attracted to building on a simpler platform that reduces their costs. Um, but there, there are going to be a lot of startups that want to build the open internet of the future. And um, there are many ways you can do that, but, you know, ranging through creating, uh, um, you know, a consumer social media service, um, such as a social network, for example, on the internet computer. Or you could, I mean, it's true, you could create something like Salesforce, open Salesforce on the internet computer. Um, you probably get different kinds of uh, um enterprises doing it, something like Open Salesforce will probably be created by, um, you know, a community of systems integrators and business consultants um, that want to participate in the success uh, of the underlying um, service, open service, as they bring their um, clients to it. And we think, you know, in the long run, it'll be people from organizations like Salesforce um, that actually build this kind of stuff out. So, you know, uh, you know, Salesforce was built by a guy called Mark Benioff, who was at uh, Oracle. He saw the transition from client server to cloud and he created Salesforce. Um, you know, there are probably people at Salesforce today who might one day, you know, want to um, uh, participate in building open Salesforce. I, I think, Adam, do you want to jump in there and field some of these, these, these points that Dom's making? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, well, there's certainly lots of sort of an entrepreneurial spirit inside Salesforce and people that want to do all sorts of stuff. I'll definitely agree with that one. Uh, but I, I would say, you know, if you think about our our enterprise clients today, what is really important then, what comes up in every single conversation is really, again, it's not the technical stuff, it's governance. Okay, we can make technology easy. You can launch these networks, you can spin up blockchains, you can tie companies together, but it comes down to who can see the data, who can edit the data, that is really powerful. Who owns the data? Who's responsible for onboarding and offboarding new new participants on the blockchain? So at the enterprise level, we we call it access controls, but that is so important. And if if we don't offer those things with an enterprise blockchain, we send them to say permission blockchain, it really is a non-starter with these enterprises. Not that they want to be closed and have tiny little networks of themselves and two other participants. They want to bring business value. They want to bring um, tons of value to the end consumer and not just link it to back end supply chain kind of stuff. They really are thinking 360 and how is that end consumer affected? But number one always is who has access and control of the data and it has to be permission. They have to have control over it and understand that super well. Otherwise it doesn't pass the security threshold. They don't feel they don't feel they can trust the system, even if blockchain provides all the cryptographic security, audit trails, et cetera, et cetera. So what we're seeing is is really 
those those business um, sort of aspects, non-technical around data sharing are paramount. And it can't just, for our clients, we're seeing it, openness doesn't really play for them. Uh, um, real quick question, sort of inside blockchain question for you, Adam. Uh, was there, why did you use um, Hyperledger Sawtooth? Was there any particular reason why you like Sawtooth? Yeah, sure. We were looking for performance. We were looking for scalability. We were looking for something that we could really build a ton of IP on top of to just integrate it seamlessly with our platform. Because the power for us is, you know, if you look at the blockchain layer, I would say, you know, every year one might be hotter than the next, have differentiation, might be better, next year's better than today. So you never know what that base layer, what the most powerful one will be. We love Sawtooth for many reasons, but long term, it may not be Sawtooth, the one we want to connect to. We want to connect to to any base layer, but it's really the power of the engagement layer on top of it. How do you link sure. it to the rest of our platform is really what's powerful to bring service cloud or marketing or all these sort of different elements to it, analytics across your centralized and decentralized data. That's really the key for us, whatever the base layer might be. Sure, and last last thing, just for Dom, uh, people want it, people are really excited to know when when's Definity, when when can we see Definity, when can we build these new brilliant open systems? Well, we're actually on a public release schedule now. So that began November the first last year with Copper, where we pushed out a, an SDK that enables people to start building. Uh, systems that run on the internet computer. Um, we also released uh, a new language called Toka at the time. There's um, going to be support for many languages, but we, we also developed one internally. Um, back in January at Davos, we um, released uh, uh, Bronze, which um, involved the internet computer running from uh, a data center in Switzerland uh, and um, demonstrations of uh, uh, open internet service in the form of this thing called Linked Up. Um, the next uh, milestone is called Tungsten. It's at the end of Q2. Um, that'll be the internet computer running across uh, several data centers around the world and um, uh, the release of a whole load of uh, new uh, open internet services. Um, we, we hope to show how people can create uh, hyperscale internet services and less than a thousand lines on the internet computer, which I think will get a lot of entrepreneurs very excited. Um, after that, um, the, the sodium towards the end of the next quarter, and then uh, mercury towards the end of the last quarter this year, which um, we, we, uh, we'll see the network actually going live. Exciting, Dom. That's great. Excellent stuff. Um, I think we're, we're I think we're we're coming to the end of this particular section. Just leaves me to say thank you so much, uh, Adam and Dom. And I, I think we could have kept going for quite a while there. Uh, you know, uh, who says enterprise blockchain is boring? It's kicking off your uh, uh, consensus. And I'll turn it over to you, Sandra, to introduce our next guest. Great. Thanks very much, Thanks guys. Thanks so much, guys. Thank you. Much. Thank Great you. to Good see luck. you. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye -bye. Thanks. Thanks.